I must have dozed off for a while. Please excuse me. Oh, it's so good of you to drop by for a cup of tea. It seems like such a long time since we've seen one another. Please call me Myrtle. Mrs. Fillmore seems too formal. I believe you've asked me to tell you something of my life. Is that right? I, I hate to bore you by focusing on my personality. Well, you are so kind. And when I look at you, my heart overflows with love. How can I refuse your request when you are so dear to me? I'm only here because it was your heart's desire. I'm not sure that I'm quite awake. Memories and dreams seem so much the same to me now. I'm a little girl in Ohio. It's the 1850s and Mama calls me Mary Caroline. I'm next to the youngest of nine children. Mama tries hard to control us all. She's always saying, now boys, quit fighting. And Mary Caroline, stop dreaming and do your chores. <laughs> Papa likes to play sometimes. Papa swings me in a circle and sings my little myrtle -y. That's how I got the name Myrtle. I liked it and it stuck. Do you know what I do sometimes? I steal, well, maybe borrow my brother's books and read them. Books on math and science, especially astronomy. That's my favorite. Papa thinks I can't understand those books because I'm a girl. But I think I understand them better than those lazy boys. I'm sick a lot. Papa says it's tuberculosis because it runs in his family. He's always saying, Myrtle Lee, you mustn't play too hard. Or stay inside. The cold air is bad for your lungs. I wish I was healthy like my sister Jane. I'd play outside every day. At night, I look at the stars outside my bedroom window and I wonder if I will ever grow up and get married <sighs> and have children of my own. <laughs> I'm older now, a teenager. And I'm upset today. My best friend Martha doesn't have time for me anymore. Last year, we read the history of all religions together and took wonderful long walks talking about God. I loved to go to school with her and sit next to her. She understood my jokes. and We laughed together all the time. Now we haven't gone on a walk together in over a month. She says, I have to wait for Robert. So I just walk home by myself. When I say, I don't see what she finds in fixing herself up and going out with boys. Mama just smiles at me and laughs. You will, you will. 
but I don't believe it. Robert is so dull. I'd fall asleep if I had to spend even one hour with him. Can I tell you a secret? I don't believe our preacher when he says God punishes the evildoers with hellfire and damnation. Why, he says, no one will escape God's wrath. <sighs> My dear gentle mother says, if God sees fit to punish, he must have a reason for it. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe that's why I'm sick all the time. But what have I done that's so bad? <coughs> Do you believe in original sin? I don't. It seems so unfair. How could God punish even little children who don't even know anything? Or maybe for just one small mistake? And then they're condemned, not just for a little while, but for all eternity? I don't believe it. I won't believe it, no matter what they say. Papa says, Myrtle Lee, you read too many books. That's why you get such ideas. But my sister Jane doesn't believe in original sin either. She argues with Mama and Papa, and she says she's going away where she can believe what she wants. Papa is what they call an abolitionist, and I agree with him. Once, a poor runaway slave came to our back door. Mama fed him, and Papa gave him a little money to help him find his way to freedom in Canada. That night, I lay awake, terrified that the Southern sympathizers would find out. Papa said, he had to follow his conscience. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. There's a war between the North and the South. The fighting is terrible. Oh. Why, Wiley Brooks was killed three weeks ago at Shiloh. It was so sad. He was only 17 and such a sweet boy. Now his poor mama has no one to help her look after her young ones. Mr. Brooks died of pneumonia the first month he was a soldier. Oh. oh. So many senseless deaths. It all seems like a nightmare. <laughs> oh. Oh. in Texas, so far from home. I'm here for my health, you know. Oh, how I miss my family. And the doctors say I'm too ill to teach. How I miss my students in Clinton, Missouri, after being at their school for so many years. We all cried when I said goodbye, 
even the big boys, Luke and Thomas. Moving to Denison was quite a shock for me. I suppose I'll get used to it here. But there's no Laura in this town, except the Laura the Pistol. <laughs> and some of the women here are not all ladies. The men like to call them the fairest flowers of the prairie. <laughs> but amongst the women of the town, they are known as excessively soiled doves. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for them, really. Most of them have no home and no one to look after them. In spite of everything, I have found a few people whose company I enjoy. I joined the Denison Literary Club, and one Monday I read a little essay I had written about Shakespeare's sonnets. There was a new person at the meeting whose name at the time I thought was Charles Philmont or something like that, who seemed to be particularly interested in Shakespeare's sonnets as he wanted to talk to me about them after the meeting. I now know that his name is Charles Fillmore, and we've had several walks and many good discussions about Shakespeare, the Bible, James Lowell, and especially Ralph Waldo Emerson. Mr. Fillmore is more in sympathy with my thoughts than almost anyone I have known. Of course, he is nine years younger than I am. But he has such maturity of thought that I find myself most pleased with his company. When I left Texas, Charles wrote me a letter questioning my orthodoxy. This is how I responded. I am decidedly eclectic in my theology. Overall is a grand, ideal God, but full of love and mercy. And close to my heart is Jesus, who shared our earthly sorrow. I must confess... There is an earthly one who has also grown very dear to my heart. Other friends come to call, but there is but one who sounds the measure of my happiness. I ask him, are you satisfied with your power? We corresponded for a long time before he finally proposed. But after we were married, Charles said that he knew from the first moment we met that I would be his wife. He thought that he chose me. But we ladies know, don't we? The woman always does the choosing. Charles and I were married on March 29th, with just a few friends and family members attending. Mama was worried sick that Charles wouldn't get there in time for the wedding. My brother David said, do you think he's really going to show up? But I trusted in Charles. And he arrived all the way from Texas, all smiles, just moments before the wedding. I was so happy to see him that I couldn't be cross. We both felt that at that moment when we said our vows, nothing else existed. We left that night, right after the wedding. Mama cried when we said goodbye. But Charles and I were ecstatically happy. I remember that trip so well.
we are on our way to Gunnison, Colorado. First, bouncing in a stagecoach, then in the mountains, switching to a horse-drawn sleigh. There are 11 men, and I am the only lady. The roads and passes are in such a fearful condition that the men are obliged to walk the greater part of the way up. But I am allowed to ride in the sleigh. It is a grand adventure. The moon hangs above, and the stars crown the higher peaks. One misstep, and we will land hundreds of feet below. Whoa! We're about to go over the precipice. The horses are pulling, and the men are pushing and swearing. My sleigh slides around the bend, half suspended in air. <laughs> Somehow we made it back to firmer ground. The men asked me if I was afraid. I said, no. Should I be? I wasn't aware at the time that I was doing anything unusual by staying calm during this journey of hairbreadth escapes. The driver, Jack, conceived such a respect for me that he laid aside all of his colorful language. <laughs> and by the end of the two-day journey, he was speaking almost like a gentleman. <laughs> At last, we made it to Gunnison. Charles and I have been so blessed with two beautiful children, Lowell and Rickard. I love those two boys with more love than I thought was possible. But I didn't know before I became a mother how demanding it was to care for small children. <coughs> <coughs> Rick is not yet one year old, but he's so restless to be on his feet that my poor back is nearly broken. Only there was someone to relieve me for an hour or two a day so I could get a little rest. These boys command every bit of my time every day. When I want a moment to myself while the boys are napping, I go into the tub and soak here in delicious solitude where no one will call me. Mama! for a few moments. <coughs> Charles is a wonderful husband, but he's so involved in his business affairs that he has little time for the children. He works hard and has been most fortunate in real estate here in Kansas City where we've moved recently. <coughs> I really shouldn't complain. <coughs> it's just that I'm tired all of the time. <coughs> and I'm afraid my tuberculosis is only getting worse. I have a cabinet full of medications. Nothing seems to help. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, my chest hurts. I can barely breathe, <laughs> and my stomach pains. I can hardly stand up. Everything is so awful. <laughs> Please forgive me. I just don't know what to do. 
It's indelicate to mention. But I even have hemorrhoids. <coughs> oh, everything is so awful. <coughs> we have moved so many times. And with the children, it's so hard. <laughs> trying to keep them out of the cold, wet air. <coughs> they say, Mama, the other boys play in the snow. Why can't we? But I'm afraid they've inherited my weak constitution. I say, boys, please, you must stay inside where it's warm and dry. <laughs> Charles says we should move back to Colorado for my health. But I'm afraid I can't make it through another move. <laughs> I am so distraught. Do you know what Dr. Henry told me last week? He said, Myrtle, there's nothing more that I or any doctor can do for you. You should get your affairs in order because you won't live much longer. Oh, my poor children. With no mother to look after them. <laughs> and what will Charles do? He's not strong, and he works so hard. <laughs> I pray and I pray. Please, dear God, give me the strength I need to live. <laughs> Why? Why have you brought me to such a terrible fate? <laughs> I know I can't go on much longer, but I don't want to die. day. The sun is shining and the roses are in full bloom. Oh, you won't believe what has happened. Everything has changed. Charles came to me one morning and said, Myrtle, I had the most amazing dream last night. I dreamed we have important work to do here in Kansas City. Well, it's the second time I had that same dream. So I think we're being told to stay here. Well, I threw my arms around his neck and said, Oh, Charles, I am so relieved because I just couldn't move again. Do you notice anything different about me? You're right. <laughs> I'm not coughing. My cheeks are pink. 
My stomach doesn't hurt, and even those awful hemorrhoids have disappeared. <laughs> oh. I'm sure you're wondering how this amazing change has happened. Well, I can hardly believe it myself. Charles and I went to a lecture by Dr. E.B. Weeks, and I had the most joyous revelation. I am a child of God, and therefore do not inherit any sickness. It's true. Think of all those years I spent in misery and delusion. Even the children are happier. Lowell came to me the other day and said, Mama, I'm so glad you have more sense now and aren't afraid to let us play in the rain puddles. We get our feet wet and you don't even care. <laughs> We're all so much happier now. Would you like to know my healing method? Well, it couldn't be simpler. I was sitting in the silence. You might call it meditation. And it flashed upon me that I could speak to the life in every part of my body. I told my lungs and then my stomach, you are not weak or inefficient, but healthy, strong, and intelligent I command in my heart the pure love of Jesus Christ flows in and out through your beatings and all the world feels your joyous pulsation. I learn not to worry by leaving the past and the future in God's hands and living only in the eternal now. I did not let any worried or anxious thoughts into my mind and I stop speaking gossipy or angry words. Every hour, I spoke this little prayer. Beloved Jesus Christ, be with me and help me to think and speak only kind, loving, true words. I know that Jesus is with me because I'm so happy and peaceful now. My greatest joy is to share this realization with others. For example, a few months ago, our laundress, Lucy, came to me. She was constantly coughing. Well, I found out she had bronchitis. It was so bad, she was coughing up blood. I said, Lucy, I have found a new way to gain health. I'm going to try it on you. So I turned within myself, and for the first time, I gave what might be called a treatment. Imagine my joy when I found out the result was instantaneous. She came to me three months later and said she had not coughed since that moment. <sighs> Others are coming to me now for healings. Many, many. Many people are writing to me now. You see this pile of letters? Here's one that looks a little suspicious. Where it is addressed to Mrs. Charles Fillmore. The S in Mrs. appears to be written in a different ink. Oh, I do believe Charles is up to his pranks again. Some letters addressed to Mr. Charles Fillmore somehow get an added S and wind up in Mrs. Charles Fillmore's pile. <laughs> it's a good thing I enjoy writing, for I answer them all. It makes me happy to share with others what I've learned.
My dear friends, I love you so much. I want each of you to know about this beautiful, true law. It is not a new discovery, but when you use it and get the fruits of health and harmony, it will seem new to you, and you will feel it as your own discovery. Prove it to yourself. If I can do it, of course you can too. Our part is to ask, believe, and give thanks. We must understand that the Lord is more willing to give than we are to receive. <sighs> there is so much more to tell you about the Unity School of Practical Christianity and about our third son, Royal. Oh, we were blessed. I wish I had more time with you, but I just can't stay. I have to go back. Remember what I've told you, and remember how much I love you. Know that you are truly a child of God. Goodbye.